Hi, I'm Ed Chivers. We're going to be going through a CNC install, uh, really to give everyone an idea of what's involved in a typical installation. What we have behind us is a typical CNC machine, and we're going to be installing the Reacton 4 kilo indirect clean agent system. This uses 3M Novec 1235 protection fluid and is delivered for a single nozzle. So here we have the, the CNC machine. In this model, we've got all the data and we've worked out the actual volume of the risk and that dictates what size and quantity of agent you will need. And in this instance, it's the four kilo and we're going to have a single nozzle mounted here, which will deliver the 3M Novec throughout the space. What we have here is the uh, 5.4 litre, the four kilo bracket. And what we've done is we've taken a panel off the top of the CNC machine and we've drilled and tapped M8 holes through here. Uh, in reality, the uh, self-tapping screws will suffice, but we always like to use uh, an M8 bolt if possible. So we've made five holes and we're going to fix them with a, an M8 by 30 bolt uh, with a washer either side and a nylock uh, nut on the other end. One thing to remember when you have your system is when you put your cylinder label on, just be aware you've got a cylinder clamp here, so you don't want to impose on this, this part of the label. And all we do to secure the cylinder, put the clamp in, and then sometimes we secure this with a, uh, an anti-tamper seal. So with the CTX valve, we're very fortunate. We've actually got four positions where we can have a discharge outlet. Uh, when you're installing, what you want to make sure is you've got the, the position of the hose identified and then you take out either one of these plugs and you insert your RE7400, which allows us to connect to our discharge hose. And in this occasion, we're actually using the, the red transport plug position and then we insert it here and then we would tighten that up accordingly. Any plugs that are removed from here would need to have a metal plug inserted so we never leave this in on a, a finished system. Okay so we've now managed to mount the cylinder on top of the machine what we've done is connected up our cylinder valve adapter to the hose and we've actually got a 3 8 elbow here to allow us to come off in this direction and we've used one of our half meter hoses and as we saw earlier we've drilled an M16 hole here to connect our bolt head and then here we've drilled an M20 hole to allow us to put our cable gland and this is where our detection tube is going to go through. So when we look inside the machine, we've got our clean agent nozzle here. This is the 3 8 clean agent nozzle, which gives complete coverage and disperses the clean agent in uh, the correct way. This is connected with a 3 8 elbow going into a bulkhead, which is fitted to our component bracket. And then the other end, we have a one meter hose that's rooted around and is supported through the P-clips. So as you can see here we've used a, a twin seal T. This allows us to come down here into the machine which does the detection tube route but also we come off this side which goes to our manual actuator. And this allows any person near the machine to be able to manually activate our system. And we use our twin seal dust covers and our protective leaving when it is not installed in a detection area. And this just provides an extra layer of protection and uh, identifies it as not part of the detection system. 
each part on here is uh, supported with our double-ended cable ties. First wrap goes around our discharge hose, and then as you can see, we're supporting the detection tube with the other side of the double-ended cable tie. So in front of us here, we've got the manual actuator. This allows for manual activation of the system. We put it in a convenient place, so the operator, if they see the signs of a fire before the detection tube has activated, which is very rare, they can pull the pin and hit the strike knob. This also allows for us to commission the system by having a charging point here and the gauge can be removed on a pressurized system and this allows us to monitor and charge the system from this point. So one of the critical things when you're installing the system is making sure that you condition the tube correctly. Make sure you use the, the proper reactor on tube cutters and you always make sure that you do a, a clean, straight cut on the tube. Make sure that the end is completely flat and clear of any burrs or anything like that. One thing that Reacton do that uh, sets us apart from the competition is we use a depth gauge to mark the tube to make sure that you actually have the right depth and engagement when you're putting it into one of our twin seal fittings. So what we would do, we insert the tube into this, make sure it hits the bottom, and we mark it with a pen, like so. And then when we push in the fitting, we can make sure that it's in the right depth. So when you push it in first time, it's here, but that's not all the way in. And that's where a lot of people make a common mistake and the system will leak. Now I know that this is completely engaged, there will be zero leaks on this system. The item that I've got here is our twin seal end cap, and this is bespoke to react on, and this allows us to terminate our detection tube line with just this cap. And uh, as we know in the market, there are other companies out there using a single seal, whereas we've tried that before, didn't work, but this one does. It's, a, it's the double sealing that it has, the twin seal from Reacton. So this is used, it allows us to terminate our detection tube line nice and cleanly and no need for an end of line. What we can see up here is our Reacton detection tube. We're using the R80 red 4.6 uh, tube and this is routed across the hazard. We come along here and we loop along and then we come back out up to the cylinder. We've supported it every 300 millimeters with our six millimeter P clips and on this installation we've actually terminated the end of the line, uh, the end of the detection tube with one of our twin seal end plugs. So on every uh, installation that has a manual actuator, you want to have one of our labels on there. Just gives some people with some real simple instructions of the stages you need to do to activate it, which is pull out the pin and then press the plunger firmly. So we've now completed our installation of our four kilo 3M Novet 1235 protection fluid system using the Reacton indirect valve and system. If you have any questions about how to protect your CNC machine, get in touch with the experts at Reacton, either through our head office in the UK, our Dubai office, or the office in America.